This lesson is 10.2 over circumference and the arc length. And a couple of the problems in the last lesson are similar to this, so you might have done a little bit of this on the last lesson. Um, so first, a couple of review things. Um, circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, or the diameter times pi. Um, and then one revolution is one circumference. That is the circumference. So if you can imagine this being a wheel, well, if I would cut this and then roll it out, that length would be the same as this length. Um, again, if you kind of think about like taking a hula hoop and you actually cut it and then try to lay that flat, that's going to be, uh, the circumference is going to be um, how far it rolls in one revolution. Um, so I want you guys to try doing uh, these first three on your own. Um, they're a little bit challenging, and so you might not be able to get them. If you get stuck, then hit play and watch these. Um, and if you don't know how to do them at all, that's fine. Um, but I think this is something that you guys can figure out on your own if you think about it. Um, but if not, again, it's not that big of a deal. I just think it helps you um, learn and helps you remember how to do it if you kind of um, sit through and try to figure out on your own. <clears throat> so go ahead and hit pause, do the first three, um, then hit play to either check your answers or, again, if you get stuck, um, then you can hit play to make sure you can figure out uh, which direction to take. So this first one, the wheels on Reggie's bike each have 20-inch diameters. His sister's mountain bike has wheels that each have 26-inch diameter. To the nearest inch, how much farther does Reggie's sister's bike travel in one revolution um, compared to Reggie's bike? So we need to find out how far does each one travel with one revolution. So this is Reggie. Um, so one revolution, again, would be the circumference. It was, if it rolls one time, that's the circumference of your wheel. Um, so that would be the circumference is, sorry, just making sure. Uh, so it's 20-inch diameter and a 26-inch diameter. So those are both diameters. So you could either make those into a radius and call the radius 10 and 13, or um, you could use that other formula that the circumference is the diameter times pi. Um, so we have 20 times pi. Some of them ask you to leave it in terms of pi. Some of them don't. Um, since this says to the nearest inch, um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply it out. So that's 62.8. And that's how many inches Reggie's bike goes in one revolution. Then his sister has uh, the exact same math. is 26 pi. That is 81.7 in one uh, revolution, not resolution. I'm going to mix that up a couple more times in this video, I'm sure. So the answer or the question says, um, how much farther does Reggie's sister bike travel in one revolution? Um, so how much further does it go? We need to subtract those. So all you need to do is take 81.7 minus 62.8. That ends up giving you 18.8, but remember it says to the nearest inch, um, so that one you can go ahead and say that is, whoops, not 20, 19 inches. That'd be to the nearest inch. And it's not squared, it's not cubed, because it's not a volume, it's not a surface area or an area, um, it's just a linear, that's how far you would go, that's a distance. Number two, this one's a fun one, an interesting one. A hamster wheel has a radius of 4.4 inches. How many revolutions will there be until a hamster has gone one mile? Now, they give you these conversions, um, and if we were doing a conversion lesson, I would show you a little bit more how to handle these. But one mile is 5,280 feet, and one foot is 12 inches. So again, the first thing we have to do is, in one revolution, how many inches does it go? Um, so the radius was 4.4. So the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, 2 times pi times 4.4. <clears throat> so that is 27.6 inches every time it rolls. So every time it goes one cycle, one revolution, it goes 27.6 inches. So there's a couple different ways you could do this. One of the ways you could do this is you could find out how many inches is 5,280 feet. So 5,280 feet 
Each one of those feet is 12 inches. So 5,280 times 12 is 63360. So that's how many inches is in one mile. It goes 27.6 inches every revolution. And so all we have to do then is divide that. If it goes 27.6 inches every time that turns, then divide that. You end up getting 2295.7 revolutions. So after that thing spins around and does 2,295 laps, that is one mile. So that's one way to figure it out, where we changed inch, uh, miles and inches. One other thing you could have done, though, is you could have done the other way, the opposite, where first I changed these inches into feet. So 27.6 inches. Um, so how many feet is that? Well, since it's inches to feet, now we're dividing. We're making the number smaller. Um, so 27.6 divided by 12. That is 2.3 feet. So every time it goes around, it is um, 2.3 feet. So if a mile is 5,280 feet, and every time that goes around, it's 2.3 feet, we just have to divide that. And again, if you're, having, if you're struggling trying to figure out if you're supposed to multiply or divide, always remember if your number is getting bigger or smaller. And we can talk about that here in a little bit. 5,280 divided by 2.3 is 2295.65, which is exactly what we had. So perfect. I personally think it's easier. I mean, it, I think it's easier to use this method um, because you're dealing with bigger numbers, but not really decimals as much. Um, whereas this one, there are smaller numbers, but you're dealing with more decimals. Um, so what I was saying earlier, if you don't know whether you should multiply or divide by 12 here, Always remember if your number is getting bigger or smaller. So if I'm starting with feet and I'm asking how many inches that is, well, it's going to be way bigger than that. One mile, if it's 5,280 feet, it's going to be way more inches that you multiply. Whereas this one, 27.6 feet, or sorry, 27.6 inches, and we want to turn that to feet, well, if you're going from inches to feet, that number is going to be smaller because 12 inches is every foot. So every 12 inches, you only have one. So that's why it's 2.3. Um, so, again, that's a little bit kind of hard to put your mind around, and if you still struggle with that, let me know. Um, but honestly, I haven't looked at the test. We're doing this chapter. We've actually never done a chapter like this before. Um, but I'm thinking that these are more like trying to get your brain some exercise. I don't think you'll have a question on the test that has this many conversions. Um, I think there will be more questions on the test that look like this one, where there's more using the formulas and not using as many um, conversions and brain teasers and think outside the box. Um, but it's good for you guys, so that's why it's there. Questions like this will show up. A unicycle wheel has a radius of 10 inches. A bicycle has a diameter of 28 inches. Which one travels further with each revolution? Justify your answer to the nearest inch. So the unicycle has a radius of 10. So the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, which is 2 times pi times 10. Put that in your calculator. It is 62.8 inches, I imagine. Bicycle has a diameter of 28. So circumference is the diameter times pi. Now, I will say I'm using both formulas. I use the radius one here, the diameter one here. Honestly, if I were you, I would probably only use the radius one. It doesn't matter, but that's the one we've been using. And so if you just choose one to use, that's what I would do. Or I guess I should say, if I were you, I would pick one of those to use every single time. Um, because if you use the same one every time, you get better at it, catch some things. Um, and the one we've been using is this one. So that's why I would pick that one. Um, but just to show you, you can use both of them. That ends up being 28 times pi. And if you want to use both, you can. I just think some people do better when they just stick with one and get really good at one method. So that is 88.0 when you round. So which one travels further with each revolution? The bicycle does. I spelled that right. Bicycle travels further with 
But then it says justify your answer. So to justify my answer, what I would be looking for with this is rather than just saying, well, because uh, the bicycle has a bigger number, I would actually find 88.0 minus 62.8 in your calculator. Um, so that's 25.2. And so I would just say um, it travels, whoops. twenty five point two inches further so that justifies it you actually have an exact amount show your work that should be good so now we're going to get into arc length a little bit now arc length the definition is a fraction of the circle circumference it's measured in the same units as the circumference um, so at the end of the lesson we'll talk about the difference between the arc length and the arc measure um, the punchline is that the arc length is in inches, miles, meters, um, feet, all that stuff. Um, the measure, so this is length, and again, we'll talk about this at the end. The measure is degrees. That's what we did in the last lesson. Talked about that central angle. So the formula is... The measure of a, uh, arc AB over 360 multiplied by 2 times pi times r. So um, I'm going to be honest. I haven't recorded the first video yet because um, I'm working kind of ahead. So I think you, we talked about this in the last lesson. Um, but this is the circumference, 2 times, pi, 2 times pi times r. This is telling you how much of the circle you're using. 360 is all the degrees in a circle. So remember, the whole circle is 360 degrees. And so if I'm only taking one-fourth of that circle, that's 90 degrees. Well, 90 over 360 is one-fourth. And so if I wanted to know what this length was right here, well, you could say, well, the whole length is the circumference, but we're only taking a fourth of that. So if I said the whole length was 80, well, the length we're looking at is the smaller length here, well, that's one-fourth of that. So you divide by four or multiply by one-fourth. That length you would know is 20. So that's kind of what that ratio is talking about. You can also think of that as a percentage. So that's 25%, which is 0.25. But all that is taken care of if you just follow this formula. But again, the reason I tell you this is so you realize that 360 is because that's how many degrees are in the circle total. Your arc is telling you what percentage or how much of that circle you're using. Um, so I end you do is plug that stuff in. So what is the length of the arc shown in red? Leave your answer in terms of pi. So we're going to leave it in terms of pi. So this is a 90 degree angle. So my formula is the arc is 90 over 360. Oops, sorry, it's not equal. 90 over 360 multiplied by. So the radius is, so that's the diameter, so the radius is 8, that goes here, and now all you need to do is plug that in your calculator. So 90 divided by 360 multiplied by 2 times pi times 8, that is 12, oh shoot, that's 12.56, that's in uh, decimal. They said they want it in terms of pi, so literally I just kind of take the pi and stick it on the back. Um, so let me go back and do this again. So 90 over 360, put that as a fraction, multiplied by 2 times 8 is 4, so this ends up being 4 pi. Always be careful to see what they're asking your answer for. Um, the last test, I wasn't really at finicky, but now I think they're going to be telling you what to leave it in, and so you do have to pay a little bit more attention. If I'm telling you specifically in the question, then I do want you to follow what they're asking. Same thing, length of the red arc, um, leave it in terms of pi. Um, so this one, this arc is 240, that's what it's labeling here. So 240 over 360 multiplied by 2 times pi times the radius is 15. Now again, since I'm leaving it in terms of pi, I'm just going to multiply everything besides the pi. So 240 divided by 360 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 15. 
And again, I say 240 divided by 360 because that's how my calculator does fractions. But if I were you guys, I would just use the fraction button. That makes it pretty easy. That ends up being 20, and then remember your pi. Um, so if you didn't put it in terms of pi, and again, I really do want you to with this, but just in case, uh, that's the 62.8, so you can see if you got the right answer. What's the length of the arc shown in green? Your answer to the nearest tenth. So again, don't make this harder than it is. I'm not saying it's super easy. I get that, but it's just the formula. So 100 is the measurement of the arc, the arc measure, out of the whole 360 degrees total. So it only went 100 degrees out of the whole 360. Then we have 2 times pi times the radius is 18. Now since we're leaving it in the year's tenth, that's one decimal place. We can just put that in our calculator. That ends up giving us 31.4 inches. I guess I probably haven't been labeling mine. I should probably do that. This was centimeters. Inches. Next one, what is the length of the arc shown in red? Um, so again, we have it, we want it in terms of pi. Um, so this one, you have to be careful because it doesn't give you that length. We don't, or it doesn't give you the degree. Well, it gives us, this one is 60. We know that is, um, it cuts our circle in half. So half of it, I mean, it's a straight line. You can think of that way too. It's 180 degrees. So that leaves 120 over here. So if the whole thing is 180, 60 degrees is the other part. If you subtract those, that's that angle addition postulate we did way back at the beginning of the year. Um, once you know that, we also need to know that the radius is 12 since the diameter is 24. Other than that, now we can just plug that in. 120 over 360 times pi, sorry, times 2 times pi times your radius. Put that in your calculator except for the pi. Remember, we're saving that till the end. You end up getting 8, and then we didn't put the pi in there, so it's 8 pi. That should be feet. Now, again, if you did multiply that by pi, you'd end up getting 25.1. I don't want you to do that, but you can at least check your work out. Now, here's a couple of the story problems that, honestly, they were on the beginning of this with the other story problems, but I moved them because now I think we'll have a little bit more of a grasp on this. Maybe not. Oh, uh, this one, yeah. This one, I think, is really, it's not a hard problem. I mean, it's not easy at all, but it's not nearly as hard as it seems. It's just, I had to read this four or five times to figure out what it was asking. So a car's turning radius, a car has a circular turning radius of 16.1 feet. So that means if you take a car and turn it as tightly as you can, turn the wheel all the way to the left, it's going to go in a circle, and it's going to keep going in that circle, and that radius of that circle is 16.1 feet. The distance between the uh, front tires is 4.7 feet. So if it's doing that, that turning radius is going by that inside tire. So the other tire is just outside that, going in this pattern. Well, that is 4.7 more feet. How much farther does a tire on the outside of a 90 degree turn travel than a tire on the inside? So they're talking about 90 degrees. So this is the angle. I like to put that as 90 degrees. So basically what it's asking is how much further is the red arc from here to here? How much uh, further is that arc than this arc? So now we just have to do the math. Um, so we have 90 over 360. Um, then we want it to the nearest tenth. Um, then it's 2 times pi times the radius is, so the first radius is 16.1. Put that in your calculator. This one gives you 25.3. Then the other one in your calculator, it's the same thing. It's still 90 degrees, still over 360, 2 times pi. But your radius, instead of 16.1, it's 16.1 plus this 4.7. So 16.1 plus 4.7 is 20.8. 
And now we can do that exact same math. We end up getting 32.7 feet. Run your answer to the nearest tenth. Um, sorry, how much further does the tire travel? So you're going to subtract those. So 32.7 minus 25.3. Because again, it says how much further does one on the outside? 32.7 minus 25.3 is 7.4. So it goes 7 point more feet. So if you just do one lap around in this car, this one specifically, crank it to the left and just go in one big circle, your outside tire actually ends up going seven more feet than the inside tire, 7.4 to be specific. Now this next one, it's not that bad. There's just kind of a lot going on with it. Um, there's actually, I'll tell you, it's one part that I think that some of you guys will forget. As a part of her artwork, Sally bends a length of wire into the shape shown. The shape is made up of a semicircle and a quarter circle. Find the length of the wire around to the nearest tent. So the wire goes this way, then goes around this half circle, then goes this way, then goes around this quarter circle. So we're trying to find how much wire is that. So essentially we're finding the circumference of that. So we have to do this by parts. So this is a quarter circle, so I know that's 90 degrees. Um, so to find this length here, it's 90 over 360. Now some of you guys will say, well, it's a quarter circle, so I know I can just put one fourth. You could do that, that's fine, but I'm just sticking with what we've been doing. Times two times pi times the radius is 12. Times two times pi times 12. So that length is 18.8. So that's that blue length. Now we need to find this red length. Well, now that's 180 degrees because it's a half circle. So it's 180 over 360. Again, if you want to say it's half of a circle, so it's one half, you totally can. That's fine. Radius is still the same. That ends up being 37.7. That's that red length. So a lot of people, when they get this, they add those together and they think that's their answer. But you forgot this length is not blue or red or this length. Well, how do we know what those are? Well, this one's labeled as 12. It's about the radius. This one's 12. So when you add these together, you also have to add those two 12. And that's the part that I think makes this difficult because you have to keep on your toes for that. And this is an exact question where I say it's really good to think about it, but I don't think you'll have a question like this on your test. The last one, this one, you could have a question like this, but if you do, it's going to be worded a lot easier, so it makes a lot more sense. So 18.8 plus 37.7 plus 12 plus 12 is 80.5. 80.5 centimeters <clears throat> is how much wire she would use. Okay, and I talked about this earlier, but really quickly, the difference between arc length and arc measure, because they are different, they seem like they do the same, um, but this is not the same, especially in this class. The arc length is the distance from one point to the other following the arc. So the arc length would be if that circle is however many feet, from here to over here is 10 feet. So if the whole circle is 30 feet, from here to here is 10 feet. That's the arc length. It's always measured in inches, feet, meters, miles, stuff like that, centimeters, et cetera. The arc measure is the degree measurement in here. That's obviously not 90 degrees, but that's the degree measurement. So um, the easiest way is to remember arc length is talking about inches, feet, miles. It's talking about the outside distance. The arc measure is talking about the degrees. It's that central angle, and it's always in degrees. So um, now that you're done with this, make sure you use these notes to work on the um, exit ticket. Um, and the exit ticket is the last two um, lessons combined. So use your notes on both of them to use. I didn't give you worksheets for those. Um, I just took the questions from your notes. So that should actually end up being easier for you if you do indeed make it this far. Oops, that's not what I wanted. <clears throat>